Today, we're going to talk about something fundamental to trading, how to test and improve entries. Why would we want to do that? Well, say you have a strategy that doesn't do really well. Are you capable of knowing whether it is due to the whole strategy itself or just that the entry is not tuned properly? More than that, say you have a good strategy, but maybe you don't know that by tweaking a bit your entry, you could actually double or triple your profits. You're probably starting to get the conundrum here. Is that generally we test the whole strategy, but really what we should do is test the entry and exits separately first. So let's solve that. I don't want to just talk theory today. I also want to apply these methods to a case study. So here's the strategy we're going to improve today. It is using two indicators, a 30-day simple moving average that I've plotted in white here, and the MACD. At the moment, the values of the MACD are the standard ones. So a 12-day exponential moving average for the slow one, and a 26-day for the fast one, and a standard 9-day for the signal smoothing. The rules for this strategy are pretty simple. We will enter a trade when the MACD line here in blue goes above the signal line in orange, which corresponds to when the histogram turns to green. And we will sell, on the other hand, when the price crosses below our 30-day SMA. We have an example of a trade here. We would have entered around here, so around here, and then we would have exited at that point. There's an extra rule to this strategy and that's a stop loss. Let me show you in the strategy builder. You can see that this stop loss will be triggered at the close value minus two times the ATR. So the average true range of the asset. This asset is going to be the Ethereum USDT pair that we're considering on the daily chart. By the way, if you want to trade with some discounts on your trading fees or benefit from some cool deposit rewards, you can check our registration links in the description down below. We have some cool deals going on there and it also supports the channel a lot. Back to our strategy. Let's look at the results. Let me add to the chart. And there we go. So a bit more than a thousand percent profits, about 71 trades, a bit more than 40% win rate, but a terrible drawdown of more than 71%. So let's improve that. Let me say first that the methods for testing entries that we're using today are based from this book. It's really an amazing book. I can't recommend it enough. So to test the value of an entry, we need to subtract the effects of the exit. And that's not an easy task. In a certain sense, what you want is the exit to be strategy free. And the first method I want to bring to your attention today is the fixed stop loss and take profit exit. Here what you do is that you decide on a distance price from your entry price to your take profit and you use that same distance below to set your stop loss or the other way around. But what's important is that it is the same distance. This means by definition that you have a risk reward ratio of one to one. So then the line of reasoning is as follows. If you don't consider trading fees nor slippage, then the most random exit will give you statistically a win rate of 50%. So when you're testing your trade entry with this method, if it has any value to it, then it needs to do better than random therefore have a win rate larger than 50%. Okay, this was method number one, and you can apply it to any entries. But now let's go further than that. Let's translate this concept into a little algorithm that will help us find better values for our entries and therefore improve the results of our trading strategy. Now, I didn't want to run hundreds of tests on TradingView, so I coded this little Python notebook instead. I will put all of these codes on our GitHub so you can fetch them for free and adapt it to your needs. Now, don't worry if you're not a Python expert. The point here is not to go through the details of this code, but rather to get the main ideas and understand the results. So here is where you can plug in the characteristics of the backtest. So here are the time frame and the symbols of the pair we're going to test. Here are the dates of the backtest. And this number of ATR is to fix our fixed stop loss and take profit exit. Typically, you should test several numbers here and also different methods of setting the take profit and stop loss. But for today, we will stick to this. Then here is where we download this data. If you want to know more details about how this works, I'll link a video where I go through that in details there. Then we define our entry condition. So as expected, that's when the MACD histogram turns green. In other words, when it's above zero. And then the exit conditions. So following this ATR method. So the stop loss is set at the entry price minus a number of times the ATR. And we had fixed this number to five. And the same for the take profit, but instead with a plus. And then we get to 
our optimization loop. This is really based on a code I presented in a previous video. I'll link it up there so you can look into that for more details. What is important to note is that I'm simply doing a backtest for several values of the slow EMA in the MACD and the same for the fast EMA. So basically I would loop over these values and each time I will compute a new value of the MACD for the backtest. Another thing that you can spot is that we're starting with an initial wallet of a thousand USDT. This number really doesn't matter as you will see we're not going to look into profits directly. We just need enough money for each backtest to go through. And you can then see that for each backtest we will have our entries, our stop loss, our take profits, then a big computation to get all our results. So let's run the code. While the code is running, let's talk about the metrics to evaluate the goodness of an entry. We already talked about the fact that in this setup, we could be looking for something that has a win rate larger than 50%. However, there's a caveat to that, and I need to mention it now. There are some trading strategies, typically ones that rely strongly on trend indicators that are very profitable, even though they have quite a low win rate. You often see scenarios where it's successful only once out of three trades, but that trade made 20% or even more while the losers only lost a few percent. This just means we can't rely just on the win rate to judge everything. We need another metric and that metric is the average profit per trade. We have the results for our win rate here. You can see the color scale gives you the percentage win rate and this is as a function of the length of the fast EMA and the length of the slow EMA. And we can clearly see that there's a region here where the win rate is really high. It can probably go around here up to 85%. So that's quite exciting. Let's see if we see something similar when we're looking at the average profit per trade. So there we go. We do have a correlation. It's good to see that on average, the average profit per trade is quite high. Around here, it goes up to even 50%. Honestly, a win rate more than 85% and more than 50% on average profits per trade. Maybe I should just forget about all all of this and just go for a strategy in the middle. Jokes aside, we shouldn't base our conclusions on just one test. So we should look if we find consistency with another one. The second method is the fixed candle exit. That is that you will exit all your trades after the same number of candles have passed. And the line of thought in this case is that good trades generally show profits very soon. For example, if a trade is not profitable after something like 10 candles, then the entry is probably too early. So this method helps you figure out whether you're catching the trend at the right time. I created another code very similar to the previous one, but this time here you can choose the number of candles that you're waiting to exit the trades. So we will use 10 for today, but when you're strategy building, you should test a few values. And then you can see that there's no specific exit condition, simply because the exit will always be after this number of bars that you've chosen. And then I've run the code so we don't have to wait. So you see it did its loop, it printed all the tests that it did, and we can get to the results. So first our win rate, and it's quite nice to see that where the win rate is quite high in this case is in the same region as before but you can see that with this test the numbers don't go as high as before but we're looking for consistency here and we do get it because this region is included within the one of the previous test. Let's see what we get with the average profit per trade. Same observation here we don't get as big numbers as we did in the previous test for the average trade profits but we do see consistency and this is the region where we do have the higher profits as well well. So it really seems that by looking at the win rate and average profit per trade for both these testing methods that Probably good values of the fast and slow EMAs for the MACD are somewhere around 30 days. So let's try such values on our trading strategy and see if we improve it. I'm going to try first say 26 and 28. But let me save and look at the results. Okay, we did increase a lot the profits, maybe times five. We reduced a bit the number of trades. So that means with this improvement, we kind of filtered out some of the bad trades. We increased a bit the win rate and the drawdown did decrease quite a lot. This is still quite a high drawdown, but we did decrease it by more than 20%. Let's see if we can do even better than that. Let me try, for example, now 28 and 30. Let me save and we can see. Okay, even better. This looks really good. More than 6,600% profits. We filtered out yet another trade and now the win rate is of 50% and the drawdown didn't change much. Remember that I'm not a financial advisor and trading can be risky. Personally, I wouldn't trade this strategy simply because the maximum drawdown is still too high. But I'm sure you've realized the power of testing 
entries now. You might be asking yourself, is there a way to test exits in the same kind of independent manner? The answer is yes. And that's the topic for another time. Like, comment, subscribe, come see us on our community discord. If you have more time, check these out. If you want to support this channel, you can make a donation there. See you in the next one and take care.